Hi guys, Keith from Markenberg Farms, and today we're gonna to do a build it and make this better. So, let me show you. So, what we have here is our little mini tiller on the back of our little Kubota tractor. Um, it's a four foot wide tiller. It tills out about 40 inches from side to side. I have a roller tamper here on the back, which is actually used for concrete to smooth the tops of the beds then a little cow to kind of knock the soil flat um, we ideally only want to till about two inches anyways but the problem is that this guard in the back is catching up on the roller and cause it to stick and drag it's also pushing the dirt out into the paths and we want to push it back in so we are going to use some of the steel uh, welder cutoff tools and we're going to extend this out and down and hopefully make like a shaper to push the dirt back in towards the center so Let's go ahead and get started. Also, as a reminder, Every third Thursday of the month, we do a live Q&A to answer all your questions and talk about what's going on on the farm. That's the third Thursday every month at 5 p.m. Central Time. Also, don't forget to go over to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there. Then finally, we are booking Mother Earth News Fairs this year. I'm going to be at all four of them. We're going to be doing Texas, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Lawrence, Kansas. While I'm there, I'm going to be setting up some console times to set up an hour to go over whatever you'd like to discuss on your farm. Um, I will be getting ready to start booking those. They'll be on the website as well. So hope to see you all there and uh, help everybody out as much as possible. And there we go. So, now we are starting to build and right now we're just cutting off some in stock from the end of this piece of scrap metal i have using a two by four just basically as a square just trying to mark lines around give me something to trace to and something to hold up on top of So I'm just trying to cut around all three sides before I flip it. Trying to get the sparks to go downwards, which eventually I will show you why, which you probably can't see why, but I can see why on my recording device of why you don't want to spray a bunch of flaming hot sparks at your screen. So there we go. I got my main piece of stock kind of cut off. Not sure what I'm doing here. I shot this uh, this footage quite a while ago. I just wait until I have time to put it together and then put it out there. Then after blowing my back out last week, bending over to pick up a bag just out of the blue, I decided it was a good week that I'm not doing anything. I can put the footage together finally. So there it is. So apparently I cut the end off, kind of working with it. Take some measurements. Take my other measurements. Oh, and then I realize what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, the frame I had was too wide for what I was working with. So I had to shorten it down. The mini tiller I have there is a little, it's about 40, 42 inches. And that metal frame I have is closer to 48. It's just scrap material I got. 
and basically I'm using it because that's what I have. It's a little eighth inch square tubing. It's perfect for building with. And it's a lot cheaper than trying to build with a bunch of other stuff. So basically I'm just trying to snap off that middle cell right now. So I'm just beating the hell out of it. Which it does break eventually. Now it looks like I'm just cleaning things up. Like I said, it's always great because I edited this stuff together and then I speed it up because this is like an hour's worth of footage and that's stupidly boring to watch. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit more entertaining. But yeah, I just do things and then I come back and try to figure out what I did to those things to make those things. It was all a non-stop process where I didn't know what I was doing when I started, but I ended up with a file product in apparently about an hour because I shot about everything I could during the whole process. Okay, I think this is where I actually damaged the front screen of my phone that I was recording with at the time. As you know, I burned the crap out of my pants because I kept shooting sparks at me. You can see the I'm cutting the channel out to make a C channel. No, no, this is just where I let my lit my pants on fire. So that's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I made a C channel so I could put the uh, roller tamper inside of there. So I had something really, really good to pack the ground with after I ran my tiller on a really, really shallow depth. And right here we're just reattaching the one leg I cut off. See in the corner there I got a little magnetic 90 using an arc welder. Trying to keep it down low temperature as possible so I don't burn through everything as I go. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. As you can see I do a lot of here, there, and everywhere. Trying to get them to start, trying to get them to go. But hey, that, that's welding for you. Once you figure it out, especially with like thin material like this where I'm having to touch and go, it makes life a lot easier. Otherwise you just burn through stuff and it does not stick together. Especially when you're using the dirty sticks basically, which are high temperature thin rod sticks to where you're actually melting together and not just kind of hot gluing it with metal back together. You gotta remember, this thing's gotta last. And I have this on a back of a tractor, getting beat around constantly throughout the season every time I turn a bed. So we're talking 64 times three on a minimum. So, and that's not counting the acreage blocks. So now I've got some uh, regular bar stock here. My plan is to actually take this and attach it to the ends where I had and bolt it to the back frame of the tiller I have. So basically I'm making tabs. That's why I went through and pre-drilled the hole. Now I'm cutting the tabs off to weld them to the end of the end stock off of what I cut earlier. Basically, that piece I cut off and I shortened and I moved over, that's where these are going to go. And then we're going to take them and weld them to the tiller itself. But we're going to attach them with bolts. So basically, I'm welding on the tabs right now. A couple spot welds. And now we're welding across. I'll tell you right now, any farm needs a little stick welder just to put stuff back together. I actually got this for $75, believe it or not. Out of sale. I came with the gloves and everything but the mask. Came with three wheels on the bottom, but fell over every time you moved it. 
I honestly think that's what turned most people off. It's actually a Miller welder, so it's actually a decent product. And I get better and better every time I use it. So there we go. I think I might have made something. Oh, nope. I wanted to pick it up off the floor so I didn't burn the crap out of my concrete. Which I've come to find that's not a good thing to do. I put a buffer there. And now we're ready to roll. Knock out the slag. I'm super quick at that. Listen to me go. I still actually have to paint the thing. But it's functional and it's back on the tractor right now. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the really, really high spots. Rounding corners. Just using a flapper disc, never did even get everything, you know, as situated as I wanted to. Wouldn't have a really nice beauty shot at the end of this thing looking pristine and beautiful. But you know what? It is nice and comfortable. That's what matters more than anything. There we go. Perfect. Fits. Look at that. Now I have to um, transfer my marks to the tiller itself, which I'm not drilling through. I'm just drilling to the point where I can make a mark so I can see where I have to drill through. And now I am full on boring through. Boring through like a three inch, three eighth inch hole, I believe. There we go. Because that's the size of the bolts I had. And honestly, that should be plenty. Now on the back side, I'm attaching it with aircraft nuts. Because that's actually what the bolts had that I had that had with them. I'm holding it in place and ratcheting that baby down. So if I ever want to take it off, I can take it off that easy. Now I actually have the tiller itself sitting upon a piece of uh, the two inch flat stock. So I've got the roller on the flat stock as well. Oh no, actually, I got back. I have the blades on the, the ground and my roller is on two inch flat stock. That way, if I drop it to this exact position, which is almost vertical, I do a two inch depth till with a roll behind it. Now I can adjust that with the top length. That's at the very top corner of the screen there. So I can adjust the depth later if I need to as I'm working with it. You can kind of see on my roller there. I've got different pieces of rope and chain across there. It actually marks the bed as I move down. It gives me different increments of planting uh, different things across the bed. So now I decided I'm not done yet. I need other stuff on here to contain the dirt mainly. So I've got these little boxes. And I'm just going to grind the hell out of them. And turn them into hopefully what I want to turn them into. These are almost eighth inch thick. Little electrical boxes. And I thought it'd be a good idea to go at it the hard way. Try to pop all the little spot welds to get what I wanted out of there because it'd be easier than just taking the grinder and you know cutting them. By the way, it's easier to just take the grinder and cut them. Ah, here's where it happens. This is where I shot the spark directly at me and I blew up the front of my Sloan. Yep. I actually had to pick little pieces of metal out of the front of my phone after doing this scene. Or maybe it was this scene. Whichever one it was, it's not cool. I had to pick them out. And it does burn through Gorilla Glass, by the way. So anybody actually having fun with their camera, 
on their phone and grinding towards it is not a good idea. So I'm just trying to take out a little bit more right now to go around stuff on there. I need to go around. Just using a standard cutoff disc. Yeah, I'm getting really close to getting done with this thing. I only have to make one more of these. I've actually got a uh, back cowl on it right now to where that kind of keeps it dirt down. And this one will keep the dirt on the side from going out away from the side. So if I can do that, then we are pretty much good to go on the project here. So again, same bolts, same screws. Just clamped it on there, drilled a hole through. And there we go. I completed a project. How do you like that? Perfectly low till, rolls it, tamps it, and makes marks as you go down the bed. And as always, hope you like what we saw here today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, go over to rockenbergfarms.com, scroll down the bottom, digital tools and training, a lot of cool stuff. Thank y'all. Have a good day.